This is Allison Sheridan of the NoSillaCast podcast. Uh, one of the great people, one of the longer running, longest running podcasts in the Max Spheres. Um, arch rival to Chuck Joyner. Um, and uh, one of the greatest uh, um, just sort of uh, random and semi-random investigations of uh, techie topics and geek topics and interesting things that I have ever seen agglomerated into one podcast. Lovely, enjoyable thing. And um, a lovely, enjoyable community attached to it as well. So very much of a fun read. And she has this wonderful person who contributes to her stuff named Bart Bouchotts, um, who is an IT guy out in Ireland. Um, and Bart put together this fabulous tool for making secure passwords, um, which Allison is going to show us. And I'm stealing Allison's program. So I should turn it over to Allison and let her run away with it. I keep getting the toggle backwards. Sorry about that. That that was a fun introduction because I've never heard that exact perspective. Uh, and I, I like that you really appreciate the community because that's really the whole reason I, I do the podcast. Um, yeah, great, great introduction. I, I have to say, you guys, you, you guys stay up late, man, 730. I'm usually in my jammies by now. What, this is amazing that you so many people are here. This is fantastic. Um, and I'm also wondering, like, you stayed up this late to learn about another password thing? That's that's amazing. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is you guys have been members of this group for a long time. I've talked to you before. I know how smart you guys are. You know that passwords are hard and you hate passwords. Everybody hates passwords, right? And making them long and strong and memorable and unique is virtually impossible for humans. We just, we aren't wired to do that. So the best defense is a password manager. And I'm guessing most, if not all of you use a password manager, or at the very least you use um, uh, the uh, the built-in tools that come with with Apple. Um, also, I'm blanking on the name of it because I don't, yeah, iCloud passwords, what is it called? Blank, oh, you're muted. Keychain? Yeah, I caught keychain. Thank you very much. That's that's what I was trying to remember. Um, so I'm I'm assuming most of you use password managers, and and that's great. And and they can create complex passwords, but they're often not memorable, and they're often very difficult to type. So I'm I'm going to start sharing my screen here with any luck. Let's see. Um, Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So um, this is just me spamming you with podfeet.com where you can go find all of my podcasts. I was going to do this at the end, but um, yeah, if you go down here, you get to all the different podcasts that uh, that Charles was talking about. But what I wanted to take you to first is a cartoon. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the XKCD cartoon. Um, it's a nerd cartoon if you haven't before. But the point of this particular cartoon, there's a whole lot of words on the page here. But the point of this is that we've been taught that we have to make long uh, passwords, we have to put in things like, you know, special characters, and we have to put in numbers and letters and uppercase and lowercase. And when we're done, they're, they're actually can be still pretty easy to guess. I can't hover because the thing keeps coming up, but that's actually a pretty easy uh, password to guess, believe it or not, by a supercomputer. So um, the difficulty to guess is easy, but that is absolutely impossible to remember. Like where was the, was the zero, the O was a zero, the four, the, you know, the ampersand, all that, that's really hard to remember. But the, it turns out if you just string four long random words together, that's an incredibly difficult password to guess by a supercomputer. And yet it's pretty easy to remember, correct? Horse battery staple. So this was piece one of what, what Bart started working with was he said, okay, uh, just making it long is what makes a password better. And, and you don't necessarily have to do as much of the crazy characters. But another site came up uh, called um, uh, Password Haystacks. This is, was written by, um, uh, oh gosh, Steve Gibson. So what Steve Gibson wanted to do was illustrate how, uh, whether a password is hard to crack or easy to crack based on what you type in. So if you type in password, you can see that in 0 0.00217 seconds, <clears throat> a, massing, a massive cracking array scenario could crack this password. If I change the O to a zero, it's still less than a, a third of a second, sorry, 0.03 seconds. 
So when you start, but the, what he what he discovered was that if you keep adding characters, even if it's the same characters, it starts to get really really hard to uh, to crack. So the concept of having these um, four words together, and the concept of having uh, a Oh, uh, somebody said, can I have it full size? Absolutely. Let's do that. That's better. Um, so the, uh, the concept of having four words together, random words, and the idea of having lots and lots of characters with, uh, with special characters and other kinds of symbols to make it much, much harder is the basis for where Bart started with his tool. So I'm kind of trying to give you an idea of why he created this and, and what he was working on. Now, the um, so the, this you've got a password uh, uh, a password manager and it's going to create passwords for you and that's fine but there are times where you have passwords that you actually have to type all the time and that's where this tool of Bart's is going to come in so uh, you know your Apple ID password you know you should always be able to use Touch ID for it but I'm telling you there's times you just have to type it in. I know uh, buying things in the store, half the time I have to type it out. I don't know, for some reason, Apple doesn't trust its own tools sometimes for the password for its Apple ID. Um, you can also, uh, a password you have to type in pretty often is your Wi-Fi password. So maybe you wanna make a, a, a long, strong, memorable password for your Wi-Fi because you're gonna have to type it in from time to time. I had to type it in on my thermostat today. Well, my password manager is a big help, but it's hard to translate goofy letters and characters in a big mess. And I want something that's easier to remember. And I can actually remember my password, even though it's like, I don't know, 26 characters long, something like that. The other um, place you wanna use one of Bart's passwords, I would suggest, is as the password to your password manager. So you need it to be long and strong because that's the keys to the kingdom. And yet, you can't afford it to be a bad one, but you've got to be able to remember it. So this is where Bart's tools co tool comes in. So any questions before, by the way, you can interrupt me at any time. I'm real good on the fly. So if you want to interrupt me uh, with a question, um, I'll ask you a question. Does anybody, have I given a case that maybe there's a reason for doing what what uh, what I'm going to demonstrate for you today? Well, is it a primary uh, password device and we're still going to use a password manager or can this be the prime device this is only to create passwords so um what bart's tool doesn't store anything it is simply going to generate passwords for you in a web interface that's all it's going to do so you need to take that password and put it somewhere it bart doesn't know where you're putting it he doesn't know what this password is for he's not tracking it in any way and i'll, I'll actually prove that to you but he's just generating the passwords. You need to store them in a password manager. So I use this tool so often, I've pinned it to my Safari browser. So I don't know if you know about that, but you can take any um, any uh, tab and just pin it and it becomes a, um, a little tiny tab like that that's always available. So um, I could take podfeet.com, right click on it and say pin tab. And now there's a little tiny podfeet.com there. In fact, I don't know why that isn't one of mine. Um, so this is this is the tool. Gee, I wonder if oh yay, I was able to move you guys off screen. You were covering part of the the interface. So this is a lot of weird looking stuff. It doesn't look like anything uh, intuitive to start off the bat. But look down here to where it says generate three passwords. A default has been set in this tool, and I'm just going to click generate three passwords. And you'll see that I've got a password that's got a couple of funny characters or special characters, two digits, uh, another special character, a word, a special character, a word, a special character, a word. So you can see that these are in a specific format. And this structure up here, we're going to look at that in a minute. I'll build some up and you'll be able to follow that. But that's going to tell you what the structure of this is. So you could right now just grab this password and go, boom, that's going to be one of the ones I'm going to use. I would suggest that Bart's default is much harder than you need to use. And, I, and I'll be able to prove that to you. The important thing that Bart does here is he gives you something here that says strength, good. You want this to say good. You want it to be green. If you do a poor job of it, it might say okay in orange or it'll say bad in red. So good green, bad red. That is, that is the, the least you need to understand about this. If you wanna get into entropy, you certainly can. 
Um, he's judging these passwords on two different levels. Um, this first entropy number, and I'm not going to get into a discussion of entropy, but the first uh, entropy just means lack of predictability. So um, these he judges it two ways. One is uh, a, a massive online cracking scenario where they don't know anything about the way you generate your passwords. They, they have no idea uh, how you do it. Well, that's going to be one, one amount of entropy. The other number is uh, what they ca call with full knowledge. So let's say, um, I don't know, you've got a business partner who's a terrible person and noticed that your next Netflix password always had four words in it and they were always separated by dashes. Well, that bad actor has a, a leg up on, on how to guess your password with, with a, a computer. So that's why there's two different numbers here. And the combination of those is just distilled into strength good. It's probably more than you wanted to know about that, but I didn't want you to get too distracted with this part down here. So in order to really look at this, like I said, this is the default and that's this, this preset up here, but let's take a look at a nicer preset. If I click on Apple ID, this is gonna be a set of, and it, I didn't generate three passwords yet, so that didn't change. Um, the Apple ID preset is only characters found on the letter and number keyboard on an iPhone. So you'll never have to hit the symbol character to go up into the weirder characters. So let's hit um, generate three passwords. Now you can see that's a lot more readable than the other one. The other one was really, really hard to read, I think. And yet you could remember arrived famous itself or cannot usual cloud. And what I like about these generate three passwords is I think of it as being like playing, uh, playing um, a slot machine. I, I spin it until I see something that makes me laugh. Wrong friends store, that's not a bad one. So this is still fairly complex, but it's something that would be easy to type as an Apple ID using, using your phone. Does anybody have any questions already? Have I lost anybody? So were those um, separators that you type or those spaces where there are colons in there? They're actually separators. And we'll get into those. There's a little, there's a section right here where we can define our own separator. Good question. Anybody else? Raise your hand if you're already asleep. That'd be good. <laughs> okay. Do you have any thoughts concerning the, um, uh, I've lost the term for it. Uh, the fact that it's uh, mirrored and kind of palindromic in its construction. That would add to the, um, or that would that would make the full knowledge part of the of the entropy it would be an, an effect, right? That's only if a human knows that. One of the things we've gotten um, misled by is you remember in uh, oh, what was the Sandra Bullock movie where she was a hacker, and and they they always in the in the movies they type they type a character and they go, oh, I got the first letter. Okay, okay, now I have to work on the second letter. Okay, I got the second letter. That's not how it works. They have to guess the whole password at once. They have to keep trying every character in the password. So the longer your password, just by itself, just making it long, actually makes it very, very difficult to guess for a computer. Because a computer doesn't know that you put in five asterisks in the middle of your password. It doesn't know they're there. It just knows that it's got to keep chunking through all the different combinations of characters. And the longer your password is, the harder that is. So these are actually really long passwords, uh, and yet they're, you know, that's pretty human readable at least. Any other questions or should I keep going? Hit it. Okay. Yes? Steve Hit Gibson it. talks about just padding passwords, like yes. putting five X's at the beginning and five X's at the end or, or whatever. And yes. make that it doesn't have to be anything tricky or hard to rem So I just tend to bulk out my existing passwords. And every now and then, instead of changing the password, I just add another character of bulk to it. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad strategy. Um, the one problem is if that password ever gets compromised or if you reuse your passwords, then that's not going to, that may not help you because if somebody sees uh, in a in a data set that you used, uh, you know, monkey and five asterisks, 
Now, if your password was one character longer, they might try monkey and six asterisks, right? So it, it, you're, you're absolutely right. Steve Gibson talks about padding passwords and that's part of what this tool is based on. And I'll show you uh, an, an example of where you could do that in the tool here too. So you, you're definitely on the right track there. I just be careful of reusing, you know, they've actually found that changing passwords all the time makes them less secure. Not not because of something that uh, you know intrinsically wrong with the concept, but as humans, the only thing we know how to do is keep it the same and add a character or do one different thing to it, and so we become more of a target that way. So uh, so that's the Apple idea. I would just want to show you a couple of these. Um, there's Web sixteen, and this is designed for when you have uh, a website that only allows sixteen characters, and there are still some out there. So these are these are pretty easy to read and type and look look pretty good and we're still at strength good because we've got upper and lowercase letters and we've got uh, symbols in between and they're 16 characters long so that's still a pretty good password. Um, you'll notice some of these. This one is all lowercase and the other two are mixed uh, mixed case and I'll show you why that happens. That's not a flaw in the tool. That's actually as designed. Um, if you want to go crazy with a web 32, we'll take a look at that one. Those are nice and long. That's going to be, uh, I mean, you can still kind of do it though, right? Because you got Malta, Nepal, cold only. You got to remember two numbers, pluses in between and equals at the end. Once you get the hang of that, maybe you'd be good at remembering that one. That's that's pretty stinking long though. The one I really disagree with Bard here is the Wi-Fi password. He makes these 63 characters long. Now, you can see that he's done ex exactly what uh, the gentleman was just talking about is he's added padding in order to do that. But have you ever tried to type in a, a password on an HP printer? You know, with the little arrows up, down, right, left, up, down, right. You know, I, I have said some non Girl Scout safe words just with the one I have about BART when I've been typing in on my uh, on my uh, HP uh, printer, so I don't I don't do this. You can also do the XKCD scenario, which is uh, four passwords, or four words, and in this case, he separates them with with separator characters, not with um, uh, not with spaces, because a lot of password places don't let you put a space in password. So you know, correct horse battery staple is good, but you need dashes in between. Okay. So these are, oh, there's one other standard one I wanted to show you was your security question. When you sign up, the, the people are most notorious for it is your bank. Your bank is going to ask you to answer some questions. They're going to say, where were you born? Well, I got news for you. 100% of the people watching this presentation right now can figure out within five minutes where Allison Sheridan was born. It is not a secret. It's on the internet. It's easily searchable. Everybody knows that. You could probably figure out the name of my first pet. I'm sure you could find out my first address. All of these things are open and available on the web. So when you get those security questions, never, ever, 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 ever tell the truth. Do not tell the truth. Whatever it says, whatever the question is, you know, sometimes I'll just answer with a silly word, but I put that silly word in my in my password manager so that I know that the answer to, you know, what is my home address was Schwinkendorf. And so uh, that is a really important thing. But what Bart has done is he's created little security questions for you or answers to security questions, actually makes them all questions, but you just copy one of these and you paste it in as where were you born? And you you put that in and you put it into your, into your password manager and you never have to remember it because you're gonna copy and paste it from your password manager. So this is kind of a way to make something random that can never be guessed because who's gonna remember enjoy a single build among yard shore because you're never going to use that again. You're only going to use it for that one uh, security question. Any question on that? Does it make sense to actually have a incomprehensigram or or something like this for both the question and the answer? I don't think so. Um, most sites I know don't. I think Bart wrote this when a lot of sites were letting you pick a question. But most of the sites I work with, they ask you the question or you get to choose from 10 questions. You have to pick three. Um, so I don't know that you have that option anyway. I mean, it would make it more obfuscated, but this is plenty obfuscated because who's going to guess that, right? 
as long as you don't use it ever twice. You only use these once. These are all one-time use. Everything, right. every password, every password question, those are always going to be um, one-time use. Yeah. Although, granted, you are still doomed if you either don't write it down or something happens and your password manager is not available. Yeah, I'm... I've never run into a situation where my password manager wasn't available. Because, I mean, how many people here don't drive back home if they forgot their phone? And even if even if you lost your phone, uh, you can log into the web interface. As long as you remember your one password or your last pass, you can still get into your, your passwords from someplace else, right? So I use a long, all alpha all words a long a long password with several words as um as the password for my password manager uh -huh. and i have spaces in between the words and i've often wondered does having have the words divided by spaces make it more guessable than if they were just a string of characters without separators hmm. let's find out <laughs> let's say hello Goodbye. So that's got uh, 50, a search space of 59. If I take out that and let's say I put a dat, well, I'll put a, I'll make it hello, goodbye. Now it was better to have the space. See, it's only 26, the, the search space depth is 26 lowercase letters. But when I added the space, that made it harder. Now there's there's 33 separate characters it could be in that in that blank spot. So the separation is helping you. I go through this all the time. It's real fun when, it, when I get a password that I think, ah, I wonder if that's good enough. I go back over here and just double check it. And um, I can send whoever, uh, Linda or, or Robert or whoever, Charles, um, links to all the stuff I'm showing here. Okay, so those are most of the ones I wanted to show you. Uh, the other ones are, I don't know, are not terribly interesting. But what really I find useful is to say, okay, uh, let, let's look at one like even the Apple ID password. Let me do this one. That's long. That's longer than I'm actually going to do. That's, you know, that's that's pretty tough. Let's see if we can make a good password with um, with fewer tough things in it. So what we do up here is we each one of these pops open. See how they, they pop open and closed. So let's start with the number of words. We've got three words. That's pretty good. But the minimum length is five and the maximum length is seven. What if we push that down to four words each? What if it was just four words? Let's take a look and generate three passwords. Look, it's still good. It still beats the entropy numbers, right? So we want to be above 78 and above 52 in these two numbers. We're still doing pretty good. Um, the next one is transformations. And this is the capitalization thing. And I'm not sure I buy that this is actually better, but if I, right now it's every word randomly cap, capitalized or not. So that's why sometimes you'll get, if I just keep running this, I'll run it a couple of times. There, I got one that has all lowercase words. Well, use if you use this uh, as your recipe for how you make your passwords every time, like you save this configuration, then having them, the the, some of your passwords have alternating caps and some don't. That would make it harder to guess. But I kind of like it always to be uh, upper and lower case. So you, you can play around with that. I, I tend to use the upper and lower case ones because that seems a little harder. So let's put that away. We'll put that one away. And let's look at the separator. So right now it's it's uh, random. So uh, it's choosing from minus colon uh, period and comma. That's because we chose Apple ID, but let's just throw in, we could put in, uh, we could put in the dollar symbol. So we could add another symbol to the library that it's going to choose from for our different kinds of passwords. And I think the idea is that sometimes you're going to grab the one with a comma. Sometimes you're going to use the one with a dash. Sometimes you're going to use the ones with a dot, but you may want to just go, you know what? I like dashes. I'm always going to pick the one with a dash. So what you can do, if you want to just specify a character, change that to specified character and just say dash. You know, I had this problem today where it wasn't letting me type. I've never seen it do that before. Okay, as soon as I delete all of them, it gets mad at me. There. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make it always be a dash. 
And let's see. So that's the separator character. So now all of these have dashes. But you know what? Look, we're still good. Okay, we're all right. Let's keep making it a little bit easier and understand these. Padding digits is the digits before and after. So I told you I'd explain this structure thing. Each of these little blue boxes is the way this has been designed up here. So it tells us that we've got a separator word, separator word, separator word. So we've got three words, just like it says three words. And um, then we've got one separator and then two digits. Watch, if I change this from two to one, you see one of them disappeared here. And we'll change it to from two to one at the other end. So now we've got one digit on either end. And if we do generate three passwords, our password's still good. Well, that's all right. That's not too bad. Um, so I hope that makes sense that you see these changing as, you, as you're changing the, the recipe, if you will. The padding symbols are like separators. And in fact, you can change the padding character to use the separator character. So instead of having the padding symbol, like in this case, an ampersand on either end, you could make it be a dash by saying use separator character. So let's generate three passwords with that. And look, our password is still good enough. So one of the reasons I wanted to show you that was you don't have to, to use these wicked hard ones like the crazy Wi-Fi password if you don't want to. I mean, if you want to be right up there with Bart, um, I went to Bart's house in Ireland once and I had to type that password, his 63 character password in on a Blackberry. It took us an hour and a half for me to get into his, uh, into his Wi-Fi network. So um, I will admit that I might not be using the uh, super, super hard ones that, uh, that he's using here. Uh, let's see, what, what else did I want to do down here? Oh, let's see. So we could, let's, let's, take, uh, let's take this and, and make it a bad one just so that we can see uh, what it would look like. I think two might get us to a bad one. Generate three passwords. There, we got it down to just okay. And again, this is only okay because somebody with full knowledge, like they know that I use two words, they're upper and lowercase, they got dashes and numbers in them. If they know that, then that's that makes this a, a harder password, an easier password to solve than just a, a random computer on the internet trying to do it. Let's see, uh, somebody asked a question and it, and it left me. It was something about, does the strength always ch ever change? Go ahead and ask it out loud because it disappears from my screen. Is good. It's good. The highest that scale goes. Does it? Is there? Do they go? To, does it go to great? Nope. Nope. Even if even if you go to the Wi-Fi one with sixty three characters, it still doesn't go to great. <laughs> so yeah, you get you get good, okay, and uh, let's see. What, what? How could we make it be bad? Um, we could make there be uh, no. Let's just get rid of a couple of things. Uh, well, actually, can I get rid of that? Can I make that be zero? Yeah, let's make it zero. Let's make it real short and generate three passwords. Make sure we can get a bad one. Yeah, that's poor. He's not that mean. He's not going to say bad. He'll say poor. <laughs> so let's go back. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let me go back up here and let's go to our case transformation. Make sure I've still got a good one here. Oh, no, we're only up to, okay, that's right, because we don't have enough words. We need three words. Let's generate three words. So what I recommend doing with this tool is to mess around with these different options and start looking at these and look at what do you have the capability to remember? Because remember, this is just for passwords that you really truly have to remember. I have a lot of passwords that I will never know. In fact, the, the password to my own website, I have no idea what it is. If you held a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you what it was because I never need to type it. I never need to type that, but I have to type in my one password. I have to type in that darn uh, Wi-Fi password and I have to type in my Apple ID password. So I, I use this pretty often. And I think the one I did for my, uh, for my own website is, is, uh, was created with XKPassWD because I just, I like doing it. I like looking at it and saying, feet show sale. That one's funny. I could remember that feet show sale. There, I've got it already. And, you know, I got to remember there's a zero. Oh, that one's good because it's got a zero on either end. I don't even have to remember two different numbers. So I use it. To, I pick the one that I think is funny. And then that's something I'm going to be able to have a better chance of remembering. 
Oh, actually, no, I'm only up to okay, aren't I? I got to make this better. Sorry. We got to have, uh, we got to have two digits before. That was exciting for a minute there. Generate two, three passwords. And we could have done it on one side, probably. Wait a minute. What did I do wrong? I'm only up to okay. Uh -uh -uh. Three words, four alternating word case. What did I do wrong? Huh. Did anybody see what I changed? I thought I, okay, I wrote my, I wrote myself some notes so that I could remember three words. Random, oh, alternating word case actually gets you an okay. Uh, randomly capitalized or not gets you good. There it is. So I think that one's kind of interesting because I don't know. I, I, I sort of, I have a philosophical problem. I'm sure the math is true because Bart would not make a mistake on the math. And by the way, he did a, an episode on my show where he explains the math if you actually want to hear about it. Um, but if you don't know which word I'm I'm capitalizing, I'm not sure that really is full knowledge. Like somebody knows that I've got some words are capitalized and some are not. They don't know which word is capitalized. It's moving around all over the place. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I, I tend to create, I take the ones that have uh, capitalized and, and uh, lowercase mixed together. So um, that, that I, I have a problem with that. So anyway, um, at this point, let me pause and ask if there's any questions because I'm going to shift gears and show you something really cool. Would it help to make one of the words a non-English word? Um, yeah, sort of. It probably wouldn't have a lot of value. Um, Bart does have a section. Where is it? Um, I thought he had it in here. There is a way to make these not be the English dictionary. Uh, he's got, oh, there it is. Yes. Uh, but he actually hasn't loaded any of the other, the other libraries. So you can have it search other, other languages, but I think that would just make it harder on you. I mean, if you know a French word that you just think would be funny in the middle of it, uh, you could certainly do that. Um, I don't think it would have great value, really, because the, these are words which helps us but that doesn't help a computer at all. It doesn't have any idea. It, it could think that it was down was first and thin was at the end. And I mean, because it doesn't know where the words are. All it knows is this is 22 characters long and it's going to start guessing and it's going to start, it's got to start with all the characters. It's got to guess all 22 every single time. So if we take this password, which is very easy for us to remember, um, and then we take it and let's put it in password haystacks and see how it does. That's 1.04 hundred million trillion centuries in a massive cracking array scenario. That's an offline attack. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> now, again, the interesting thing is this is where you could say, okay, I'm just going to add some tildes to the end. Look at that number going up. So I've just made it way harder, and yet that's not way harder to remember. But this is, I think one problem with this might be if somebody's watching you type in a password, and then they see you hit the tilde over and over and over and over and over again, then they're going to, that, that's something somebody could armchair, uh, armchair guess, where this one they probably wouldn't be able to guess. They might notice that you're always hitting the dash or something, but they don't know what the words are, the numbers. Any other questions at this point? This gets into my paranoia about such things is that um, it is less about actually getting a long stream of characters on the things and more about the patterns involved. And I figure if there's anybody out there who is actually trying to like produce a massive cracking system, they're of course going to do the simple words. They're going to do the most common words on things, but they're also going to pay attention to sites like this and what patterns that they are installing so that they can actually run the same randomized patterns and get it much, much faster. But remember, this is making all different patterns. Which patterns are you going to check? There's a, there's practically an infinite number of patterns you can create with this tool. Which is why I always recommend you, you know, changing your pattern before you actually generate a password. Sure. You know, just don't, don't just use the default. Um, you know, adjust one of the settings up on these gray bars here. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not a bad idea. 
um, or, you know, pick one of the weirder characters, that kind of thing. Yeah, using the the one that I do like, though, is that, that Apple ID password, being able to type it, you know, maybe you change it where you go grab this ampersand and you stick it up here instead uh, on one of them. I don't know, you know, mix it up yeah. a little bit instead of having that symmetry like you're saying. Or adding an extra character here and there manually. Yeah, yeah. And I've been, I've been known to do that where um, sometimes I get lazy and I go, okay, let me go with Web 16 because I don't want to type that many characters. I'll put that in and then I'll go, well, you know what? There's no numbers in that. I think I'll put two numbers someplace. Uh, so I've definitely, I've been known to do that. Um, let me go back and set this up. We want a padding digit before and after, and I want to change. So I'm going to change it to what I like. Uh, let's see. Well, we'll just do, a, let's do a specified character. That, by the way, that's another thing you can do. By default, it goes to random character here. And I showed you we could use the separator character. So take whatever I typed in up here and put it as the padding symbol. But I can do a specified character. Like I just, I just really like that tilde. I'm going to use the tilde. And the separator here, I'm going to choose a specified character. And uh, uh, well, we did the dash earlier. Let's try that. So I'll generate three passwords. So now I've got these good passwords, and this is a this is a scenario um, that I like. Let's say the thing you can do is you can save your configuration. So if I click Save Configuration. This is what's called a JSON file. It's just a little text file that has key value pairs. So number of words, three. That's this up here. Word length minimum, four. Word length maximum, four. Case transformation random, special characters, the dash. Padding digits before and after is one, and padding type is fixed. It's just spitting out in a, J in a text format what all of these are. So what I do is I copy that, and I made a text expander snippet out of it. Now, I'm not going to do my text expander snippet for you because then you would know how my passwords are created. Um, but I, I could, uh, I could uh, take that and I could copy it. I could put it in my password manager. I could put it in a locked shared note so that I could always create passwords the way I liked them that isn't one of these defaults. Maybe that would make George. Uh, George. I did it again, Charles. I always called Charles George. <laughs> I thought I could make it through a whole hour, 45 minutes without it. Uh, maybe that would make uh, Charles Paranoia uh, rest a little easier to use a, a, a configuration set of his own. That would work. I wonder what would happen. What would happen if you changed one of them? Oh, no, those already can be changed separately. Yeah, but digits before and after. You don't like symmetry? Let's do this. And uh, we'll load that config. Uh, actually, we'll generate three passwords. Yeah, so now we got 974 and one. Uh, now it's not symmetrical, so he's got to be happy. So let's save the config, and uh, and then I can copy all that and paste it into anywhere I want, and and well, probably someplace secure, and then paste it in here when I want to make a password. So there's a question I thought you guys would ask, uh, and I think it's an important question to ask: is why should I trust Bart with this? Was anybody already thinking that? Oh, come on. Sure you were. <laughs> well, I trust Bart. I know him. I would trust him with my children's lives. <clears throat> and I would trust him with all of my passwords. Uh, but you don't know him. You don't know him like I know him. And uh, so there's two things to know, or three things to know. The source code for this is open source, meaning anybody can look at his code and see how he's doing it. So you can see whether he's doing anything nefarious with this code. But Let's say you're not uh, you're not actually a code breaker and you don't really know how to even go about that. I don't most of the time. So uh, let's take a look and see whether he's gathering any information from us. In the uh, if you turn on the develop menu, you can show uh, what's called the JavaScript console, and that's going to pop up down here. And below here, I can look at storage. And this is going to show you what cookies he might be storing. So let's look at his cookies. He's storing no cookies, nothing, nada. There's nothing on this website that can track you to another website. So if you generate a password here and then you hit command tab and you go to, uh, you know, mybank.com, he doesn't know that's where you went. So there's no way he can connect those two pieces of information because he absolutely is not tracking you. And you can see it right here. It would be here if he could. We look at local storage. Um, I'm using a, um, 
uh, an extension called Dark Reader that allows me to change the um, the screen from dark to light in Safari, and it, he has saved my state on that of when I use Dark Reader. Uh, and then session storage, nothing. He's not storing anything about you here. So I think I hope that's a good way to show you that he's not doing anything nefarious with it. That is the main part of what I wanted to tell you about this. Um, I use this all the time, um, constantly. I use it. I like I said, I, I pinned it in my tab here, and I uh, I use my um, text expander snippet to load a configuration, and then I go down and I look at the funniest of my passwords. I copy it and I paste it in my password manager, and then I put it in the new site that I'm that I'm working with. Questions. But that would and for be, that would only be for use places where the password manager wouldn't enter a password automatically. Is that right? Well, I don't ever let the password manager choose for me. It's it's okay if you do, um, but they're not usually human readable, and they may or may not have as much entropy as this. And you can may or may, and you can't really control like how many some some. Some of the tools will let you choose how many words there are, and and they're getting a little bit better at it, but they're not as they're not as fancy as this is, and still as easy to remember. So I tend to use this. Um, I, there's nothing wrong with allowing your password manager to choose your password for you. Nothing wrong with it at all. It just if it makes it hard for you to type it in and 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 be able to transcribe it. Then life's harder than it needs to be. So one more question, I guess. So one off from this. As you've been talking, I was looking at Steve Gibson's haystack calculator, mm -hmm. which you had on the screen, and it's very clear. It says this is not a pass password strength meter. So if I wanted to get a password strength meter, I can go and Google it, and there's a whole lot of them, but I have no idea if any of those are safe to use. <laughs> how would how would one know? How would one get a, a safe password strength meter that you could type your actual passwords into and know they're not being stolen. Well, if if you create them here, this is a password strength meter. Bart's site is doing that for you. The 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 entropy number is telling you how strong it is. How unpredictable is it? I know that doesn't completely answer your question because you're not you can't just type in a password you've you've created. Does that make sense? Yes. So that is entropy is the best way to measure that. Has he thought about allowing adding a feature so that you can type in your own passwords? Hmm. I don't think he would do that. Because think of the of the trust you would be giving him. <laughs> do you really would you trust him if he let you do that? That would give me pause. I I would, yeah. I I don't think that that would be in the community's best interest if he did that because that's 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 a slippery slope right there. Some of the difficulty on that is that, yes, you can do the entropy measurements across those, and those are pretty generic. But if you're looking for strength on things, you're probably also checking it against known passwords out there. And that requires a comparison uh, coming from the server. Right, right. But these aren't in a format that they... Well, I, I, there is a non-zero probability <clears throat> that running this, say, the way I have it configured, would come up with someone's password who had been uh, in a in a hack, right? There's a non-zero possibility. I would right, suggest your, it's a very small probability. Yeah, mm -hmm. that your password is like on the "Have I been pwned?" list or something yeah. of that sort. Exactly. And and it just happens to be tilde four dash lend in all capital letters both gift nine seventy four with a tilde then a dashes in between. Chances of that are probably pretty small because this is you know like we're saying this is creating an an awfully large space of of different passwords. Yeah. It's not zero. But, then the, you, yeah, but you, on the other hand, if you've got passwords where you're like put, putting in correct horse battery staple, and it comes back as like please don't use the just straight up password. 
you know. What were you going to say, Linda? The have I been pwned site might be a way to check for a strength. You know, at least would tell you if a particular password has been used. The other thing, if if somebody wanted to, um, I don't know. I I guess that I I, I would. It's not really it strength. Means, it just means it's been it's been right. in a hack. It's That's been all a hack. it means. Yeah, I just I would tend to use the GRC site anyway, even though he says yeah, it's I not do. a strength meter. You know, it's an well, indicator. It's yeah, not. It's I, not a. Is, fact. Do you know what his uh, basis for saying it's not a strength indicator? Because it seems to me like it is. Am I, I don't. Some? I don't know. That's a question for some somebody who who listens to him. I have a hard time listening <clears> to <throat> that entire podcast, but it's somebody who listens to him can send that in as a question and let us know. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I did want to show you, and again, this is another link I'll I'll send over. Um, I wrote up everything I taught you today in a blog post last year. So if you are thinking, God, what was that thing that she said again about uh, the presets? Well, which press, preset is which? And, and what did she say about that? Everything I know is I've written up in a blog post. So you can read all of these. Um, you can go back and use this as a reference guide. So you don't even have to remember a darn thing I said. One of the reasons I actually document everything is because my memory is so bad. So I'll often Google a solution to a problem and one of the, and the answer is a blog post I've written. <laughs> and not just once, a whole bunch of times. All right, any more questions on this? So, yeah, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, so, yeah. Good. Um, I use this all the time it? too. I just, just for people to know, I use this all the time. My own default is to sometimes just alter a word or something, yeah. but um, it's fun. It's, it works really well to be able to type stuff. Oh, that, that reminds me. I want to uh, point out one more thing. If you use it all the time, there's a donate button in the upper right-hand corner. It is, it is not free for Bart to run this service. Uh, so if you, you know, send them five bucks or 20 or something, what's your passwords worth to you? Uh, I do that every once in a while, just because it makes me happy. A little bit of uh, um, reciprocity as it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and one uh, capper on this, for the super geeky, you can actually download Bart's source code, compile it and run it on your own local machine. And there is zero web exposure of any sort. In that and case. did you do that, Charles? I have done that as a tech demo. <laughs> I think I did it when he taught us how to do it, but I uh, I don't use it that way regularly. I got that little pin in my sidebar. It works just yeah. great for me there. Yeah. One more... Meant for those people who are downloading and compiling their own open source code. Let's see. Um, somebody asked here, Jerry asked, since the code is open source, couldn't a bad guy who's very good at coding change something like the cookie collection to get useful, usable bad stuff about you? So open source code simply means that the code is available to be copied. So somebody could take Bart's code and create their own service and they could do something bad with it. Um, that is that is a possibility, but they can't, just because it's open source doesn't mean they can change Bart's code. Uh, I could, like, let's say I find that bug uh, where, where I was trying to type the character in and it wasn't typing and I had to delete and re-add it. And let's say I'm, I'm a real smart coder and I could figure out how to fix that bug. I could submit to Bart the fix to that code to say here's how I and here's how I fixed it, and he could absorb that back into his original code. That's how open source works. But he would read it first and understand it and know what it does, and he would have to accept that as a pull request into his open source code. So no, nobody can go in and change what Bart has done. Bart has to be the only one who can do that. That's a great question, Jerry. Yes, Linda. Just as a um, thing back on testing the strength of passwords. One password does that in effect. So that's yeah. another thing you could do. Enter it into one password and see what they say about its strength. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a great idea. I totally forgot about that. You could get a password from Bart's tool, put it in one password, and it's going to tell you. I mean, I've never taken anything from Bart's tool that that one password didn't say, whoa, that's wicked strong. So pretty good indicator, I think. Um, and before you go, uh, this is your chance to do a little promotion for your own shows. 
Oh, okay. So, uh, well, let me share my screen one more time uh, just to make sure we uh, keep an eye on that worded. Uh, let's see, Safari, here we go. Um, Oh, actually, oh no, we pinned it, remember? Why was that not already pinned? So um, I do, uh, I have five shows and uh, it's really four shows, but one of two of them are combined. My main show is called The No Silicast and I am the, I believe I am the second longest running uh, Apple podcaster. Uh, um, Adam Christensen is the is the number one with the Mac cast, but I am number two. I'm ahead of Dave Hamilton and John Braun on, uh, on the Mac Geek Gab, which drives him crazy. Um, they've done more shows, but I've been doing it longer. Uh, the Nocillacast has been running for uh, 16 years without a, missing an episode. Every single week, 16 years. So it's something you can count on that Monday morning it is in your feed. It's usually in, in your feed by 6.30 on Sunday nights. I also do the show live on Sunday nights, which is really fun. Basically, I have a live audience watching me create the show, and that's, that's a really good time. And then Chit Chat Across the Pond Light is a conversation podcast with people I think are, are fun, interesting people in tech. Uh, is it always tech? But it's always, always interesting. I just had uh, Dr. Nikki Ackermans on, who is a an evolutionary biologist who studies headbutting animals to find out whether they get concussions in hopes of helping football players and people in, in uh, the armed services. So you never know what you're going to get, but it's always interesting. And then uh, Programming by Stealth is a show I do with Bart Bouchatz, uh, where uh, he's teaching the audience to, to program. We have done uh, HTML and CSS and JavaScript. We uh, just learned Git, which is the uh, open source to, or the tool for um, doing version control. And with GitHub to post our code as open source code. That is really, really fun. I have enjoyed the heck out of that. These two shows combined are Chit Chat Across the Pond. It, it happened accidentally, and if I had it to do over again, I would never do that. So it's super uneven. You know, you're learning about headbutting animals, and the next, uh, you know, next episode, you're learning about variables and if statements and in programming by self. So that's a little weird. The last show here, Taming the Terminal, is a uh, kind of an evergreen show. It's, uh, I think it's 41 episodes now. Uh, it's, it's teaching you how to use the terminal on the Mac. And it's, it's very methodical and goes through step-by-step step how to do things in the terminal, real simple things to some, some much more complex things by the time we were done. Um, we're still adding episodes, but very, very infrequently. So it's kind of a, a, a match set. Uh, and you can actually download the, um, uh, the, the book of Taming the Terminal from this link right here. So there's a user manual basically, and actually programming by stealth also has Bart's uh, tutorial show notes. So, uh, and Bart is on the NoSilicast. He's the one that does security bits on that. Wow, I did a long enough talking there. Sorry about that. All right, now- was... so much content. Yeah, I work really hard. So thank you, thank you everybody for uh, for being um, attentive and asking questions. That was awesome. I really enjoyed myself. Granted, thank you for uh, the time and the effort, Allison. All right, bye everybody.